One, two, three. Hey, how's it going? This is Vincenzo Belpiede. I'm here in uh, Malta. This is what you see is Valletta, it's the capital. Uh, I spent some incredible days at the Delta Summit hosted by the Maltese government. It was all about uh, blockchain and decentralization. Um, it's been possibly one of my favorite conferences ever. And uh, having worked at Nokia and Microsoft, I've been to tons of conferences in all sorts of sectors of the tech industry. Uh, but this has been really a top conference. Um, it, it, was, it was about 3,000 attendees from all over the world, which was uh, a much higher number than they was initially expected, because there's so much demand for blockchain and crypto. And people were really from all over the world. There was a lot of uh, fellow Americans, because as you might know, I'm an Italian American, a lot of Europeans, also a lot of people from Asia. Uh, Malta has really emerged as a uh, potential big capital and the best uh, place from where to operate a blockchain and crypto business. Um, the agenda was extremely well done, like a lot of uh, uh, great talks. The videos will be available online. Uh, the level of speakers was, was incredible. Um, not just the Prime Minister and also the, the Minister of Innovation and the Minister of Finance. Um, they were really kind of there talking with yeah, a lot of attendees and other speakers. Um, but there were also some of the top people in the, in the industry, like the CEO of Finance, CZ, or Roger Ver from uh, Bitcoin Cash. And, and both of them were, I've, I've seen, I've been able to have a chance to talk to them. But I've seen how they've been extremely open with the whole audience. Um, and I think that's been something really inspiring for me, definitely a key takeaway, that um, when you have an industry like crypto or blockchain, where actual billionaires are, are still relatively young people uh, that are uh, really open to talk to more people, to sh kind of share their knowledge and kind of have more people become successful, that's really where the whole world can progress a lot faster and the whole industry can move faster. But of course, a lot of kudos goes first of all to the government because the government hosted this conference, uh, which was really well run by Dr. Uh, Abdallah Kablan. It was uh, kind enough to invite me here as a speaker. It was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for that. But also just the whole general atmosphere was really important. Everybody felt you know, very safe to operate in a safe space that the, that the government that is uh, from a, from a you know, European Union member state uh, has, has, has done really clear legislation that has been announced, uh, very you know wide and encompassing, all sorts of aspects, and they're you know, planning to do a lot more to cover you know token sales and crypto exchanges and all this incredible stuff that's coming out of the tech industry. And so I think all the attendees, all the speakers, felt like they were finally you know not uh, in, in one of those early uh, Bitcoin or uh, you know kind of blockchain conferences where. Everybody was meeting in a little bit of a secret environment, you know, and they were all secretive about everything. This felt really like, oh, we can talk about everything, we gotta be open, and, and I think that's one of, gonna be one of the main challenges that we're gonna have in this industry in order to improve it and bring it to the next level. We're gonna need to bring a lot more of that transparency and, and figure out, uh, you know, exactly like kind of who the different players are and what everybody's been doing and what everybody's is working on, of course. Uh, stealth is still gonna be important and respected, uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, talking about like some of the improvement sides of our industry. We definitely have to work on that, right? Um, I think it's not been long ago that some of the you know most visible people in the blockchain space on LinkedIn have been have had uh, SEC investigations and were kicked out from LinkedIn and were kicked out from some of the other ICO review websites. Uh, there's still um, some of those issues. But I think that's uh, normal with any growing industry that had a, kind of a lot of money and attracted a lot of people and attracted some of these like professional scammers. Uh, likely, there's a lot of really solid companies. You know, let's remember that Binance turned uh, a profit that was larger than uh, Deutsche Bank earlier this year. So I think that's extremely important to remember. And um, yeah, I think another point of feedback that that I have as a as a proud European is that uh, I was hoping to see Roberto Viola, the EU Director General for Innovation here in person. I think it's a good sign of respect to a lot of the attendees. Uh, there was just a video there 
Uh, I think uh, Roberto would love to chat with you because I think there's a lot to improve there in the delivery and quality of the video. Hopefully we'll have a chance to meet at some point. Um, but um, because you know, one of the issues with the EU is that the EU doesn't feel so close to its citizens. You know, we're too far away in Brussels. This is one of the places where one of the things that we gotta improve as a European Union. Um, but I was very happy to meet with uh, Miriam Dalli, a European parliamentary, a, a young European parliamentary representing Malta that was speaking in person in one of the panels about blockchain and healthcare. And it was uh, definitely uh, really great to see a European parliamentary that, that gets technology, that pushes technology, that was there in person, uh, in, 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 in the front line. Uh, to push our industry forward. I'm sure she's going to do great work also at European level. Uh, I look forward to stay in touch with Miriam as well. Um, and uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just touch upon the importance of, of government in facilitating. I mean, we, I talked about that, but I want to re-emphasize it. You know, everybody felt, felt safe, everybody felt a government you can approach. It's not those governments where like it's impossible to meet with the, with the minister. I, was, I made friends with the, a couple of people from Vancouver and they've been working with their government and obviously for them it's a lot harder to get a whole government together and, and talk to them and here Malta is a lot easier so remember that and maybe we move to that other topic that I want to push to you guys and I'm pushing it as I feel like I'm a citizen of the world right I'm lucky to uh, have been born in Italy and I'm uh, lucky to have become an American so I've got like kind of two big continents that I kind of understand and, and uh, you know relatively well but I really think we should come together as one world. We're going to Mars, so I hope that when we go to Mars, we're gonna be just one human race. We're not gonna have too many different passports and uh, just one and just one human race and that's it. Uh, and um, and I think like, you know, going, going back to why like uh, Malta is like so incredible is that it's a, remember it's a EU member state. So the level of compliance with a lot of like uh, KYC and, you know, anti-money laundering is extremely high uh, so they're really doing their best to and do the, all that it needs to be in order to be like a, an extremely uh, legit and well-regulated country and uh, so you could definitely feel that the need and you know the, the emphasis on the transparency and you know let's remember that Malta has been has you know was a it's a small island 10 kilometers by 25 south of Sicily Sicily is you know part of southern Italy where I'm from one of the poorest areas in Europe and these guys these incredible Maltese with their hard working but also very positive attitude they've been figuring it out how do we go from being like a, a poor little island with little resources to become a financial center so they've done that first right they became a financial center uh, a lot of uh, trusts and hedge funds and and, and so on going, you know, that are registered here, they, they pass regulation to attract all those capitals. They've done that with uh, also yachts and, and, and private jets. And I think they've done it even more successfully recently in the last few years with the iGaming, which is the kind of uh, online gambling industry uh, that I have a, a few of my friends that I know also, you know, from many years ago, back from university, they moved here for that industry from far, also from Australia. Shout out to my friend Ben Brown. And, um, you know, that's that's a great story to tell, you know, for me coming from abroad, why Malta? Like, that was a great story. Like, my, my friend came over here uh, from far and um, and they're not doing it, doing it again uh, with blockchain. And I think it's it's incredible. It's fantastic. It's uh, remember, it's a country that it, where the official language is English. So for anybody that obviously we know that English is, is the global language. You know, it's going to be an easy place to deal with uh, also reading the legislation and so on. Unlike, you know, Switzerland, where I think a lot of stuff is still in German, from what I understand. Um, and uh, the weather is fantastic. It's, uh, you know, very nice and warm and sunny all the time. Uh, I think really one of the few challenges they have is that they still have the British plugs and that they still drive like the Brits. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like really a fantastic place. I cannot... Uh, the other thing that I said in my panel, that I want to say this again, here again, is that one of the reasons I, I was here in June for an event organized, uh, it was a little pool party organized by the Malta Blockchain Summit. I want to thank uh, Iman Poulis for inviting me to that and organizing that. It was my first time in Malta a few months ago in June and uh, I, I came back now here in October and I can't wait to come back in November and I you know, can't wait to stay always longer. And that's a lot thanks to you guys, Maltese people, Maltese friends. I met so many of you and I hope to meet a lot more. You have that genuine and I think it's very Southern Italian, like happiness and happy spirit and very open and talk to everybody and always have that smile on no matter what. 
always, always be very positive and constructive. So I think definitely like always keep keep that up and you know keep that going, and we'll always be attracting more people. This was a, a, a short debrief that I wanted to do right here, you know, from uh, showing you a bit of Malta and, uh, and uh, the, the center of the town, and this is Sliema, the bay. But uh, really, my point is that if you are in blockchain and crypto and you haven't been to Malta, you should definitely come over and check it out. And you should do that for the Malta Blockchain Summit, which is the beginning of November. Just Google that Malta Blockchain Summit and you'll see. Thanks a lot to again to Iman Pulis for inviting me. Also, there's a speaker. And uh, yeah, you guys come over. It's definitely going to be worth your money. Take care. Enjoy.